Chris Johnson. I'm a vocal coach and I'm here to talk to you a little bit more about why a straw can help you to keep your voice a little bit more healthy as you start the school year again and no doubt you'll be shouting at kids to get them to behave. Uh, now the reason why we use this straw is it's steeped in vocal science. It's a way of resetting the voice and regularly throughout the day keeping it in good con condition keeping the energy in the sound so that when you speak your voice is efficient and you don't have to push to create volume. The way it works is that it traps air in the mouth and uh, it may feel a bit uncomfortable to do that to begin with but that helps the vocal cords which are little bits of muscle uh, in your larynx uh, which is in your throat they're the sound creating element of your voice and they need to be supported and helped in the way that they create sound waves. So the air that blocks in your mouth when you sing through a straw helps to support them and put them in the right kind of place so that you can start off warming up your voice and getting your voice in the right spot from the outset. Uh, also, there's this, uh, this point where if pressure builds in the mouth, it also builds up in the gap between the vocal cords. And the gap between the vocal cords is where they come together and they create vibrations and sound. But if the pressure inside that gap is a little bit higher, the vocal cords, they still vibrate, but they don't hit together too hard. And hit, vocal cords hitting together too hard is what can damage them. And what's, that's what happens when you would shout or when singers sing too loud or you push at your voice. So that buildup of air creates that little bit of a cushioning effect on your voice so that you can keep it healthy and not injure it whilst you warm up. So we'll take this straw and there'll be several sizes of straws for you to experiment with. But if we take the straw and from the very bottom of your voice where you talk to the very top to do a pitch glide or a siren as we call it in the singing world, a little bit like this. Just take it nice and easy. Obviously if you're a female, you'll be going a lot higher than that. You want to go to the comfortable top of your range and after a couple of goes you'll figure out where that is. So you need to do that up and down maybe six or seven times over the course of about a minute or two. From that point on, that point is so we can stretch your vocal cords because they are muscle. Like any muscle, they need a good stretch so that you can get blood flow in them so that none of the muscle fibers get sticky or stiff. And once you've stretched it, now it's time to unpress the voice. And to unpress the voice, we need to take the same distance, so the comfortable bottom to the comfortable top, and do it in hills or accents instead, which goes like this. Again, comfortable bottom to comfortable top. Take a good breath before you do this and this part of the exercise you want to do this what's known as forte or with fairly strong volume or effort. With each hill also when you take a breath you want to feel that breath go into the belly and as you do a hill to put that hill on the belly to slightly contract your belly to drive that hill. and let your belly do the work. That helps to restore the relationship between how your vocal cords vibrate and how air is delivered to those vocal cords and creates sound. As when a voice gets tired throughout the day, quite often it's the breathing muscles that actually drop off and get kind of tired. And when airflow towards the voice and from the lungs gets kind of low and kind of like this, voices tend to start to get a bit kind of pressed and a bit tired and that's the most efficient place to be speaking. If you then shout at someone or call out to a big class, you're typically going to be in the wrong place in your speaking voice to support that and to create a sound that's healthy. So you may find after doing this little exercise and this bunch for take four minutes to do it, that your voice tends to be a little bit higher a little bit brighter and a little bit easier to use which will give you that uh, edge when you're talking to the class, 
you're going to be able to be heard and you're not going to have to work hard with muscles outside of your larynx to try and hold yourself together as you get tired. When you do this or how often, that's up to you. You may feel like your voice gets tired every couple of hours. So whenever there's a break, take two or three minutes to do this again. That may equate to four or even five times throughout the day. That way, you'll never slide into the depths or the dull sounds that create inefficiencies. Um, the reasons why you should be doing this are because you're not just a teacher, but you're a professional voice user. It's a bit like a doctor. You know, a doctor has specific qualifications and they have specific skills, but without the ability to communicate, a doctor can't perform his or her job effectively at all. So then a career change is probably in mind at that moment, maybe the lab or something else, right? So heaven forbid, you don't want to end up in the office just photocopying, right? You want to keep doing your job, what you love, and you want to keep using your voice to communicate. Hence why looking after is extremely important. Just a little word of warning, uh, singing te um, uh, or rather teachers, even singing teachers or even... Uh, fitness coaches, anybody who t talks to large groups of people are likely to have vocal trouble and do make up a large percentage of the visitors to uh, ear, nose and throat surgeons and have a lot of vocal issues. So that will stop this from happening. Females, just to let you know, the men have won over on you again because women are far more likely to suffer vocal problems than men are. This is only because of the pitch that you talk at, only 90%. The higher the pitch, the more vibrations per second are on the vocal cords. That means if you talk maybe three or four pitches above a male, you could be vibrating your vocal cords 100, 200, 300 times more per second than a man, which means every time there's a vibration, it costs your voice. So when you speak for five or six hours a day, at a higher pitch, your voice will just naturally degrade. So you have to keep it healthy, take your opportunities to rest. Your vocal cords are also a little smaller than a male vocal cord. So they're not as robust and they can't take as much volume or as much pushing. So make sure you get your volume and your presence back in your voice through using your straw and making sure that your voice is vibrant rather than pushing through a voice that's not resonating or, or en energized enough. I hope that helps. Keep strawing, check out your pack, and maybe I'll see you again someday.